Hi, I'm Professor Bob Kalin. I'm here to tell you a little bit more about environmental forensics research here at the University of Strathclyde. What we have is a really interesting group of people doing research in microbiology, molecular microbiology, in, in chemistry, and in lots of different areas in hydrogeology and water resources to better understand the matrices and the way that these contaminants are moving within the environment and potentially impacting ecosystems or human health. To give you a little bit more background on some of the analytical capability we have here, I'll talk about a couple of the instruments we have. The one I'll talk about right now is a really interesting new machine that we've been able to bring in here under Scottish Funding Council funding. It's a GCGC time of flight mass spectrometer. Now that has an awful lot of letters to it, but essentially what we're doing is we have two separate columns that separate all the different compounds. We can then understand very much in detail where these compounds came from, whether they were uh, degraded by microorganisms, produced by microorganisms, or where they came from an initial industrial type of application. What well, essentially we do here is we take samples that we've taken from the environment and we've may either derivatize them or put them into a matrix that we can get into the GCGC GC time of flight mass spectrometer. This automated system here comes down, takes a uh, representative aliquot and injects it into this gas chromatograph. Inside of the gas chromatograph, it actually will then separate each one of the compounds on a series of different columns. Essentially, all the individual compounds which have come through the two columns on the GC enter the time of flight mass spectrometer. They're excited with electrons and they move along and the time that it takes them to go through the mass spectrometer is, gives us an indication of the molecular weight of each one of the compounds. So by having two GC columns and a very, very fast time of flight mass spectrometer, we could take what normally would have been a few hundred compounds we would look at in a contaminated land or a water site and actually identify more than 5,000 compounds from the same sample. If we look here onto the screen, we can actually see that we have not only a one-dimensional but a two-dimensional separation of the different compounds. And you find then in that second dimension oodles and oodles of other small peaks that would have been hidden behind these larger peaks. And those are the different compounds that might come from microbial degradation of contaminants or they might be unique compounds that come from an industrial process that we are yet to understand. Once we've gotten the separation of the compounds, you also have to identify the compounds. And so what we've done is we've gone back to the mass spectra, to the output of the machine, and we've identified the small different compounds that are coming out that were of interest. And then we move over and we look at the actual types of separations that you're getting from a, the mass point of view. And comparing that back to a library of what we actually have as far as compounds that we've identified of concern, we're able to identify, for instance, that peak there happens to be 2,3-dimethylnaphthalene, which might actually come from an initial process of uh, a gas work site, or it might actually be a microbial breakdown product of naphthalene itself. 